How you doing, everybody? Uh, my name is Sean, for those of you who don't know. I don't know who's watching this right now. We could be a gigantic company by the time someone's watching this with like 5,000 employees. And we've got a million cabins all over the island of Newfoundland and Labrador by now. Plus, we have probably have some underground accommodations thing. From what I recall, back in way back in 2018, Korea was going to blow up the United States. So I don't know who's watching this right now. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to go over some of the things that are really important to own. Who we are, what we stand for, what our vision is. Talk about our core values. First of all, we're going to talk about our purpose. Ohm's purpose is to rewrite the rural story. Now, what does that mean? Rewrite the rural story. Think about rural Newfoundland over the last, let's say, 100 years. What it is to be a Newfoundlander was born in the outports. That was where it all started. And those were the thriving places a hundred years ago. The story of rural Newfoundland has gone from it being a place of bounty and a place that was thriving to a nothing place. Why keep rural Newfoundland alive? Everything is moving away from the outport. Those smaller places started disappearing. That has become the story of rural Newfoundland. So what Ohm wants to do is rewrite that rural story. We don't believe that there's nothing in rural Newfoundland. We believe everything is in rural Newfoundland. Why is, are, is the provincial government asking them to resettle and move to bigger centers? Because the provincial government can no longer provide for these tiny little places. So why don't these tiny little places find a way to provide for themselves? So the way we rewrite the rural story, it's all about the blame, baby, is by creating small businesses through tourism in your community. And believe me, there's loads of opportunity. You're sitting on a gold mine, you may not even know it. What were the things that gave rural Newfoundland life? Fishing was huge. Now in Burlington's case, lumber was huge. But fishing and forestry and mining, these are things that come and go. But you know what'll never stop? People. They'll always want to go to a place like Burlington, like Middle Island, like Smith's Island. So if people are coming from around the world and want to come to your hometown and stay and eat and go on tours and go on hikes, what are they going to do? They're going to want to spend their money. They got lots of money to spend. I mean, look at Fogo Island Inn. People are going there dropping three grand a night to stay in a hotel. It's almost like solar energy. As long as the sun doesn't burn out, there's always going to be energy feeding our planet. And I believe as long as, you know, Kim Jong-un doesn't wipe out the entire planet, people will always feed rural Newfoundland. And the thing that makes our business different than any other tourism related business is we are a social enterprise. Now what is a social enterprise or a social business? What a social business is, is it operates and acts exactly like any other business with the same goals, to make as much profit as possible. It's what happens to those profits and where those profits go that sets us apart. By people coming and spending their money in these tiny places and that money getting reinvested back into the community, we're not depending on the provincial government anymore. We're generating our own money. So if you can imagine a future where in your small community that was once dying now has a thriving multi-pronged tourism operation, you've got stores and cafes and restaurants and accommodations, each churning out money generating a profit and that money gets reinvested back into the town in a small place five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars goes a long way that is how we rewrite the world story